So earlier, I made three freaking videos in a row where I couldn't kill anything, and now I am really tired of it. This time, I'll be going in the complete opposite direction. This time, I'll be baiting Payday 3 while killing every single Civ I can, without raising the alarm. First, the rules. A completed run means wiping out every single Civ while remaining in stealth, but this has a notable exception. Some maps have infinite Civ spawns. No matter how long I stayed, they never stopped coming. This does make me curious about how long you can extend negotiations for, but that's not the video we're making today. On maps with infinite spawns, only the inside of the building must be cleared. Some maps, like No Rest, have infinite spawns that also enter the building. I will take out as many of these as I can, but at a certain point I need to actually finish the mission too. Other than that, the only rule is I can't disable any guards. I can kill them, and I can start a search, I'm just not allowed to intentionally disable their AI or trap them in a way they can't get out of. Two more quick things. There's no difficulty requirement for this challenge, so some maps will be done on normal and some will be done on overkill. Doing some of these maps on overkill sounds like a nightmare, one I will indulge in should there be enough support for it. But not alone. That's right, for the first time in one of these videos, I won't be taking on this challenge alone. I'll introduce the rest of the gang as they join in. But I've kept you waiting long enough, so let's get started with No Rest for the Wicked. To be clear, I'm going to be skipping over a lot more in this video than I have in others. Some of these maps took over a dozen hours to complete, and I need to actually get this video done. So I'll mainly cover successful runs, while highlighting strategies as we go along. I'm not used to playing this game on normal, and was surprised to find the door to the employee area unlocked. The next small shock was realizing I could actually shoot the cameras, something I haven't been able to do in what feels like forever. Both because of this, and because of my impatience, when I got caught by a guard, I opted to just mask up and start clearing the first floor employee area. I killed everyone except for the executive I found in the manager's office, then found the door to the second floor was completely unlocked. What even is this difficulty? Next, I took out the second floor guard, followed by the people in the cubicle room. The roof guard apparently didn't show up today, so I guess I could just leave these guys here. With the second floor cleared, the only area I have left to do is the lobby. The only reason it's even possible to do this section is you can close the windows down which the guards don't find suspicious for some reason. I also wouldn't be able to risk shotting sips down. Shotting jumps from sieve to sieve and can even pass through these windows, meaning if I shout it can easily escalate to the street, which I can only handle if I get lucky. Before worrying about any of that, however, I baited the guard to the back area and took him out, then finally entered the lobby for the moment of truth. I'm honestly not even sure I managed to pull off this particular run. I totally forgot to shoot the cameras before I entered the lobby, but somehow I pulled it off, even after alerting two people outside. I did forget to clear out the people behind the cubicle wall, but they eventually came out on their own to remind me. With the lobby secured, I moved all the bodies away from the front door, giving me more time to react should anyone come inside. My next objective was to complete the objective. I grabbed the executive I saved earlier, scanned his eye, then reunited him with his lost co-workers. At this point, the parking lot guard called for a search. I genuinely don't know why he did this, but it surprisingly didn't kill the run, so I just went with it. I hacked the manager's PC, which for some reason was just left in the middle of the boardroom, and got into the vault. I finally managed to record myself producing seven diebacks, and on a successful run too. I really am good at this YouTube stuff. Even though I don't need it, I brought the stack of Canadian cash too. For old time's sake. It was sad I was finally ready to leave. So of course someone discovered the massacre in the lobby right as I left. I'm still counting this as a win, but that is annoying. Hey guys, editing Deja here. Just a quick note, we'll be skipping over Road Rage, and I forgot to mention it in the script. So at first I wasn't sure what to expect on Dirty Ice, but I figured at least the front area would be a pain, so this run, I took it out on normal. It didn't take me long to realize just how easy this decision would make this mission. So on top of the four pages you get on normal, you can also afford to miss one, causing the other guards to go into a search. The problem with this is on normal, Dirty Ice only has five guards, meaning you can literally just kill them all. With this in mind, I messed up pretty early and immediately started my silent, deadly sweep of the building. I did regret this tactic later on when I was ready to take on the front lobby. I'd forgotten to close the shutters, so I lost control of the situation pretty fast and had to reset. My next run, I started off with the lobby, which meant every once in a while someone would walk in off the street and find the remnants of the customers before them. Out of curiosity, I decided to let this one woman continue trying to call for help. In my experience, civs aren't actually calling the police when they call for help. Instead, they're calling for a nearby guard. I was curious what this would mean if all the guards were dead, but after a while she pulled out her phone, so I put her down. After that, I secured all the loot I needed and beat Dirty Ice on my second first attempt. Usually Rock the Cradle would be next, but I've decided I'd rather save that one for later. Instead, we'll move on to Under the Surface, a map I won't spend much time on since there are only two civs in the entire building. I did this map on Overkill, by the way, though it didn't make things much harder. I took out the manager while he was in his office, and dragged the janitor over to the break room, along with the guard who caught me in the process. Not too long after that, I secured the required paintings and beat Surface on my first try. 
Golden Sharks next. And for this one, I'll be joined by Wacky A. Spartan, my gaming slash romantic partner. Yes, in that order. It wasn't long before we made our way through the gate and into the vault lobby, where we experienced somewhat of a culture shock, per se. We are used to a guard in the vault lobby, and switch boxes scattered across the second floor. But on normal, the guard took the day off, and the boxes are all located in the vault lobby itself. I killed the camera operator, and we moved on to the second floor. We managed to mess up with both of the guards, meaning we were already down three pagers. This is actually a really big problem. There are three guards in the lobby, meaning we can't afford to take them all down. This ultimately was our demise. I tried to keep the guards distracted while Wacky cleared the lobby, but eventually they stopped going to investigate the exact same sound in the exact same place over and over again. Our second run didn't last long before Wacky got caught committing a crime, and we decided it wasn't worth continuing while the guards were searching. Amateur. On our third run, I flipped the wrong switch and started a search. Always got ironically undercut me, don't you, universe? Our fourth run is where we started taking things seriously. I didn't kill the camera operator this time, instead using the bag trick. This saves us a pager. Meanwhile, Wacky was using a strategy we use pretty often. Baiting. Using either corpses or hostages, you can bait people where you want them to go, since if they see it, they'll run towards it. At least most of the time. For some reason, they'll sometimes start running towards some random point on the map to call for help. We called this playing poker, for reasons that'll make sense later. I saw a woman entering the back area, something I've never seen someone do before. She entered the HR room, a room Wacky had already cleared out by then, and apparently didn't notice any of the bodies, including the one she literally sat in the lap of. I took her out, and we moved on to the lobby. We tried not to kill any of the guards, but one by one, they became alerted and we had to take them out. This is the most challenging area, so it costing us a few pages is fine. After we secured the lobby, a woman outside managed to spot me through a window. This escalated into five sieves outside that all needed to be taken in. Somehow, we salvaged the situation. We moved the bodies away from the door and moved upstairs, keeping an eye out for if anyone came in from the street. We couldn't afford to make the same mistakes as in our first run, so we were more careful this time, pick people off and bring them to the offices guards never check. Once the second floor was clear, all we had left to do was the basement, where only two sieves hang out. I lit the vault while Wacky took care of them, and we did a final sweep of the building to make sure we didn't miss anyone. Usually a bunch of people come in off the street on this map, but for some reason they just weren't doing that this run, so we finished Golden Shark in not too many attempts. Next up is 99 boxes, a mission you'd expect I'd have little trouble on. For some reason, past me seemed to take this as a challenge, and made sure to mess up at least a handful of runs before managing to complete the map that has 9 bloody sieves on it. Most of these failed runs had nothing to do with the challenge too, you'd think she hadn't done this map a few dozen times already. Anyways, eventually I stopped trying to kill anyone until after I took care of the camera operator. Gerald was as much as his dick as always, being sure to ignore not one but two times I hacked his radio while he escorted me. But in time, I got the truck set up and entered the storage yard. I grabbed the key card and back the operator, stashing all four nearby employees in the room with him. I had a weird encounter with the lead guard where he kept turning to stare me down and nearly ended the run. He continued to do this after I broke LOS on him, and I'll be honest, it did genuinely creep me out a little. Eventually, he stopped and I got back into the yard to clean up the mission. There are only three employees in the storage yard, so I picked them off and secured the components. 99 boxes was a mostly normal run, once I got my shit to get along enough to actually get it done. Meet Baba Yeah 4, my best friend and the man who'll be joining me for Touch of the Sky. While I didn't exactly need his help for this map, we were tired of trying and failing on Rock the Cradle and decided to take on something easier. Note we did do this map on normal, so Sky will technically need to be done if I ever do this on Overkill. Baba did actually participate in several other runs I didn't end up mentioning. We did some testing on Surface to confirm Sibs never stopped spawning, and made a few attempts at Golden Shark that never ended up working out. Just wanted to make that clear. Anyways, let's get right into it. Like the pair of professional gamers we are, me and B immediately messed up the first run and had to reset. In terms of real life timelines, this was the very first map we actually completed, so our methods were a little... unrefined. It took us a few runs to realize there are only seven guards on the map, and since we have the ability to kill five of them, I left only two. If we made sure those guards were the camera operator and Gary, we wouldn't have any obstacles left in our way. Once we realized this, the map was ours for the taking. We picked off every guard in the penthouse, which meant Gary will start searching. Luckily, he isn't allowed to open the front door, so he's trapped out there. Until the delivery guy let him in. Kind of weird how that ended up working out. At first, we planned on opening the panic room for all loot, but then I forgot and killed Mason, so we had to use clipping instead. By then, we'd realized Gary was about to enter the building and moved all the bodies into a hiding place, meaning the delivery guy dropped out the whiskey bottle to an empty room. As a bit, I poisoned the bottle anyways, and Shade told me to see if I could make Mason drink it. I tried to explain to her that Mason was dead, but she didn't seem to understand, so I just rang the bell anyways. Shade seemed convinced that someone was approaching the bar and pouring a drink. Shade's either seeing Mason's ghost, or she forgot to take her meds this morning, 
We used our expert hacking skills to decrypt the drive and left Gary alone in the penthouse. So long as he never finds the bodies, I expect he'll just take the place over for his own. Or more likely, he'll go back to standing outside the front door and holding up his hand at anyone who comes near. I salute his dedication. And now it's time to take on Rock the Cradle, the map I'm sure you've been waiting for. This was actually the very first map we made attempts on, but it was the second to last map we got done. At first, me and Bubba tried picking off as many people as we could individually, and only escalated the clearing rooms if we absolutely had to. This is where we met what would effectively become the main antagonist of this challenge, the Pulse. I mentioned way back in the No Rest section that shouting jumps from sieve to sieve, but it's not the only thing that can do that. For some reason, when sieves get scared without being shouted at, the effect can sometimes jump from sieve to sieve as well. The difference is that this effect can jump again, and again, and will continue to jump until there's no one left in range. The real run killer, though, is the fact that this also jumps to guards, meaning if the pulse happens, every guard on the floor becomes instantly alerted, at best wasting all of our pagers. Our strategy started to change over time, however. Eventually, I discovered a strange interaction with stationary guards, such as the VIP guard or the guard at the front door. If you distract these guards with a knife, when they return to their post, they'll permanently be facing the direction the noise came from, meaning we can face them in the wrong direction and clear rooms right behind their back. This changed our strategy from quietly picking people off to taking out the entire first bar area in one swoop. This worked better than picking people off, but we were still often plagued by the pulse. Eventually, I realized something, though. Since the pulse is proximity-based, if we just killed everyone close enough to alert the guards and didn't let anyone escape, then the pulse became a non-factor. At this point, the plan changed entirely. I would sit up on the stairs next to the VIP entrance while Bubba went in the front door, and we would both take out everyone close enough to pulse the guards. At this point, it didn't matter how many people became alerted, so long as we held down the exits. Sadly, though, Bubba could only take so much loss, and eventually dropped out of the challenge. Instead, I was joined by a new face, Lizzie. Lizzie's another one of my friends, and I trust her with my life, so long as the task is distracting the same guard over and over again. Anything else, and I'm iffy about it. Thankfully, though, Wacky also returned, and I trusted with their abilities combined, they could probably do Bubba's job. While we watch this unfold, I want to quickly say that an overkill version of this challenge would be a lot of work. So much that I need to see genuine interest from you guys to justify it. If you want to see that video, let me know. It took a few tries, but after some growing pains, we cleared out the entire first floor in one swoop. The best part is we still had three pages left by the end, and there are only three guards downstairs. At this point, the run was basically ours. All we had to do was take out of the cameras and pick off the guards one by one. So long as we had someone watching the stairs, no one could get away. And this challenge is dark. Even though we'd already succeeded, we all knew we wouldn't be doing this again, so we decided to have some fun with it. And by that, I mean we spent over half an hour moving every single body into the IT room because we thought it was funny. This genuinely almost crashed Wacky's game. And with that, we killed every Civ in Payday 3 without the guards noticing a thing. Hello again, guys. This video ended up being harder to make than expected, but I should have videos lined up for the next two weeks, so I shouldn't miss another upload. Depending on when the patch comes out, the next video may or may not have the new content in it. We'll have to wait and see. I also wanted to address a few small things. The more observant among you have noticed my in-game username is Tasia the Kitten. I tried to change it to fit my new brand, but it didn't work, so I guess it's saying how it is. I do go by Tasia though, so feel free to call me that. Also, I didn't manage to work it into the script, and the video goes up in like half an hour when I'm recording this, but the reason we called it playing poker was on Rock the Cradle that run to one of the poker rooms. Anyways, thank you for watching, subscribe on your way out, and I'll meet you back here next time for another Payday 3 challenge. Can you imagine the conversation between the camera operator and the police the next day? So you're telling me you didn't see anything? Well, I thought I saw armed gunmen into the frame and start shooting people, but then the screen went black, so I assumed everything was fine. I'm sorry, you what?